the book of Acts chapters 21 to 24. Chapter 21 Paul meets up with James. Acts 21 verses 1 to 5 And it came to pass, that after we were gotten from them, and had launched, we came with a straight course unto Coos, and the day following unto Rhodes, and from thence unto Padera, and finding a ship sailing over unto Phoenicia, we went aboard, and set forth. Now when we had discovered Cyprus, we left it on the left hand, and sailed into Syria, and landed at Tyre, for there, the ship was to unlate her burden. And finding disciples, we tarried there seven days, who said to Paul through the Spirit, that he should not go up to Jerusalem. And when we had accomplished those days, we departed and went our way, and they all brought us on our way, with wives and children, till we were out of the city, and we kneeled down on the shore and prayed. Who said to Paul through the Spirit, that he should not go up to Jerusalem, it was the people who told him not to go, because the Spirit told them what would befall him if he went. Prison, beatings, shipwrecks, but none of those things moved Paul as we see later. Acts 21 verses 6 to 9 And when we had taken our leave one of another, we took ship, and they returned home again. And when we had finished our course from Tyre, we came to Ptolemy, and saluted the brethren, and abode with them one day. And the next day we that were of Paul's company departed and came unto Caesarea, and we entered into the house of Philip the Evangelist, which was one of the seven, and abode with him. And the same man had four daughters, virgins, which did prophesy. Philip the Evangelist Philip was an evangelist for the kingdom saints, whereas Timothy was to be an evangelist in the message of grace for the body of Christ. Ephesians 4 verse 11 And he gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. 2 Timothy 4 verse 5 But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. One of the seven, these seven are mentioned in Acts chapter 6 and were selected to minister unto the widows who were being neglected. Philip was the one who went and did a work in Samaria in Acts chapter 8, and then he led the Ethiopian eunuch to the Lord on his way back to Ethiopia. For daughters, virgins, which did prophesy, we see that Philip's daughters had been given the temporary gift to prophesy. These were kingdom saints. They were not part of the body of Christ which began with the Apostle Paul. Revelation 14 verse 4 These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the firstfruits unto God and to the Lamb. 1 Timothy 1 15 16 This is a faithful saying, and worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. Howbeit for this cause I obtained mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might shew forth all longsuffering, for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. They were doing the same thing that two others had just done in prophesying about the persecution that Paul would face if he went on to Jerusalem, but none of those things moved Paul. Agabus would also say the same thing. There is no evidence that this one-time gift was anything more. Acts 21 verses 10 to 14 And as we tarried there many days, there came down from Judea a certain prophet named Agabus. And when he was come unto us, he took Paul's girdle, and bound his own hands and feet, and said, Thus saith the Holy Ghost, So shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man that owneth this girdle, and shall deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. And when we heard these things, both we, and they of that place, besought him not to go up to Jerusalem. Then Paul answered, What mean ye to weep and to break mine heart? For I am ready not to be bound only, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. And when he would not be persuaded, we ceased, saying, The will of the Lord be done. A certain prophet named Agabus, Agabus was a prophet for the kingdom church, but here he is prophesying about Paul, the apostle of the Gentiles. Romans 11 verse 13 God would use this trip to get Paul to Rome where he was going to get an all-expense-paid trip paid for by Rome, thanks to his Roman citizenship that God made sure he had before he was born.
Acts 21 verses 15 to 16 And after those days we took up our carriages and went up to Jerusalem. There went with us also certain of the disciples of Caesarea, and brought with them one nason of Cyprus, an old disciple, with whom we should lodge. The end of Paul's third missionary journey. James and the Elders. Acts 21 verses 17 to 18 And when we were come to Jerusalem, the brethren received us gladly. And the day following Paul went in with us unto James, and all the elders were present. The disciples of Caesarea, this was where Philip and his daughters were, and Cornelius' family and household. These were all kingdom saints. Paul went in with us unto James. Notice that Peter is not mentioned as the prominent one anymore. James the Lord's half-brother is the pastor of the church in Jerusalem. Some claim that James usurped the role from Peter, but nothing in scripture backs that up. James was the pastor, while Peter was an apostle, they are different offices. Acts 21 verse 19 And when he had saluted them, he declared particularly what things God had wrought among the Gentiles by his ministry. What things God had wrought among the Gentiles by his ministry? What ministry? The one they discussed at the Jerusalem conference where Paul would go to the uncircumcision and they would minister to the circumcision. Galatians 2 verse 9 And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship, that we should go unto the heathen and they unto the circumcision. Acts 21 verse 20 And when they heard it, they glorified the Lord, and said unto him, Thou sayest, Brother, how many thousands of Jews there are which believe, and they are all zealous of the law. Thou sayest, Brother, how many thousands of Jews there are which believe, these are the Jews that were compelled by the twelve apostles to save themselves from this untoward generation. Acts 2 verse 40 They are all zealous of the law. These Jewish kingdom believers in Jerusalem were still operating under the law because they had not been told not to. If God had wanted them to stop, he would have told them to do so. You cannot reconcile what Paul was doing among the Gentiles under grace with what was going on back in Israel concerning the law and say they were the same. Acts 21 verses 21 to 22 And they are informed of thee, that thou teachest all the Jews which are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses, saying that they ought not to circumcise their children, neither to walk after the customs. What is it therefore? The multitude must needs come together, for they will hear that thou art come. Thou teachest all the Jews which are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses. Paul does not get a chance to answer James here. Acts 21 verses 23 to 24 Do therefore this that we say to thee, We have four men which have a vow on them, them take, and purify thyself with them, and be it charges with them, that they may shave their heads, and all may know that those things, whereof they were informed concerning thee, are nothing, but that thou thyself also walkest orderly, and keepest the law. Paul goes ahead and does what James asked him to do, and he takes this vow. Purify thyself with them, a ritual cleansing before offerings in Jerusalem. This lets you know the kingdom saints were still operating the same way they were waiting for the time of Jacob's trouble to begin. This would all end with the destruction of their temple in 70 AD. John 11 verse 55 and their subsequent dispersion in the nations. Be it charges with them, this meant they wanted him to do what they were going to do. Acts 21 verse 25 As touching the Gentiles which believe, we have written and concluded that they observe no such thing, save only that they keep themselves from things offered to idols, and from blood, and from strangled, and from fornication. Acts 15 verses 28 to 30 Acts 21 verse 26 Then Paul took the men, and the next day purifying himself with them entered into the temple, to signify the accomplishment of the days of purification, until that an offering should be offered for every one of them. To signify the accomplishment of the days of purification, this is the same type of purification as there was in number 6 that was called the days of separation. An offering should be offered for every one of them. This has caused much debate by those who would try to water their actions down to claim they only gave a financial offering to the church in Jerusalem. 
This was not a Nazarite vow like in Numbers 6.13 because the Nazarite was not to shave his head. Judges 16 verses 17 to 22 that he told her all his heart and said unto her, There hath not come a razor upon mine head, for I have been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. If I be shaven, then my strength will go from me, and I shall become weak and be like any other man. And when Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called for the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up this once, for he hath shewed me all his heart. Then the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and brought money in their hand. And she made him sleep upon her knees, and she called for a man, and she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head, and she began to afflict him, and his strength went from him. And she said, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep, and said, I will go out as at other times before, and shake myself. And he wist not that the Lord was departed from him. But the Philistines took him, and put out his eyes, and brought him down to Gaza, and bound him with fetters of brass, and he did grind in the prison house. Howbeit the hair of his head began to grow again after he was shaven. Samson did have the same days of separation involved in his vow as did this vow. Notice Leviticus 12 verses 1 to 2, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a woman have conceived seed, and born a man child, then she shall be unclean seven days, according to the days of the separation for her infirmity shall she be unclean. It was an offering for their vow, not for having their sins remitted. Paul had not yet received his final revelations from God, so he acted on the information he had at that time. Some say no Gentiles believed before Acts 20, Sergius Paulus in Acts 13 was a Gentile who got saved under Paul's preaching who did not bless any Jews. These Jewish kingdom believers continued to practice the law for a time, and they along with the whole nation were eventually dispersed into the Gentiles' nations by God for its rejection of Christ. It would be many years before Paul made it to Rome to begin writing the last seven of his epistles. Acts 21 verses 27 to 29 And when the seven days were almost ended, the Jews which were of Asia, when they saw him in the temple, stirred up all the people, and laid hands on him, crying out, Men of Israel, help, this is the man, that teacheth all men everywhere against the people, and the law, and this place, and further brought Greeks also into the temple, and half polluted this holy place. For they had seen before with him in the city Trophimus and Ephesian, whom they supposed that Paul had brought into the temple. When the seven days were almost ended, the days of separation or purification. The Jews which were of Asia, the Jews he had previously tried to convince with the scriptures that Jesus was the Christ. Acts 20 verse 4 and brought Greeks also into the temple and had polluted this holy place. An uncircumcised person was considered unclean under the Old Testament and therefore they were unable to enter the temple area. Acts 21 verses 30 to 32 And all the city was moved, and the people ran together, and they took Paul and drew him out of the temple, and forthwith the doors were shut. And as they went about to kill him, Tidings came unto the chief captain of the band, that all Jerusalem was in an uproar, who immediately took soldiers and centurions and ran down unto them, and when they saw the chief captain and the soldiers, they left beating of Paul. They left beating of Paul. He was beaten with rods three times. 2 Corinthians 11 verse 25 Thrice was I beaten with rods, once was I stoned, thrice I suffered shipwreck, a night, and a day I have been in the deep. Acts 21 verses 33 to 34 Then the chief captain came near, and took him, and commanded him to be bound with two chains, and demanded who he was, and what he had done. And some cried one thing, some another, among the multitude, and when he could not know the certainty for the tumult, he commanded him to be carried into the castle. To be bound with two chains, Acts 21 verse 11. Acts 21 verses 35 to 40, And when he came upon the stairs, so it was, that he was born of the soldiers for the violence of the people. For the multitude of the people followed after, crying, Away with him. And as Paul was to be led into the castle, he said unto the chief captain, May I speak unto thee? Who said, Canst thou speak Greek? 
Art not thou that Egyptian, which before these days madest an uproar, and leddest out into the wilderness four thousand men that were murderers? But Paul said, I am a man which am a Jew of Tarsus, a city in Cilicia, a citizen of no mean city, and I beseech thee, suffer me to speak unto the people. And when he had given him license, Paul stood on the stairs, and beckoned with the hand unto the people. And when there was made a great silence, he spake unto them in the Hebrew tongue, saying, A Jew of Tarsus, a city in Cilicia, Acts 6, 9, 15, 23, and 41. Chapter 22 Paul's Defense Acts 22 verses 1 to 4 Men, brethren, and fathers, hear ye my defense which I make now unto you. And when they heard that he spake in the Hebrew tongue to them, they kept the more silence, and he saith, I am verily a man which am a Jew, born in Tarsus, a city in Cilicia, yet brought up in this city at the feet of Gamaliel, and taught according to the perfect manner of the law of the fathers, and was zealous toward God, as ye all are this day. And I persecuted this way unto the death, binding and delivering into prisons both men and women. Hear ye my defense, you will notice that Paul's defense is really his sharing of his testimony of how he came to Christ. I persecuted this way unto the death, Acts 8 verses 1 to 4. Acts 22 verse 5 is also the high priest doth bear me witness, and all the estate of the elders, from whom also I received letters unto the brethren, and went to Damascus, to bring them which were there bound unto Jerusalem, for to be punished. Acts 9 verses 1 to 2. Acts 22 verses 6 to 9, And it came to pass, that, as I made my journey, and was come nigh unto Damascus about noon, suddenly there shone from heaven a great light round about me. And I fell unto the ground, and heard a voice saying unto me, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And I answered, Who art thou, Lord? And he said unto me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom thou persecutest. And they that were with me saw indeed the light, and were afraid, but they heard not the voice of him that spake to me. Acts 9 verses 3 to 7. Noon, Peter's vision was also at noon. Acts 10 verse 7. When you read Paul's other accounts of his salvation on the road to Damascus, you will notice that those that were with him did actually hear a voice, Acts 9 verse 7, but they did not understand the voice. In chapter 26, Paul tells you that Jesus spoke to him in the Hebrew tongue, just as Paul did here before his countrymen. The reason why these men were not able to understand the voice Paul heard was that God was not about to reveal the mystery to these men, as it was to Paul alone that he was revealing that truth. Acts 22 verses 10 to 12, And I said, What shall I do, Lord? And the Lord said unto me, Arise, and go into Damascus, and there it shall be told thee of all things which are appointed for thee to do. And when I could not see for the glory of that light, being led by the hand of them that were with me, I came into Damascus. And one Ananias, a devout man according to the law, having a good report of all the Jews which dwelt there, Acts 9 verse 8. A devout man according to the law, Paul makes mention of that fact that this kingdom saint was a devout man according to the law, and that he had a good report of all the Jews which dwelt there. Many synagogues had kingdom saints attending them, and they were still devoutly practicing the law. We today in dispensation of grace are not under the law of Moses and never have been. Romans 6 verses 14 to 15 For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin, because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. The glory of that light. This is the glory of God the Son spoken about in Revelation 21 verse 23. Revelation 21 verse 23 And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. Acts 22 verses 13 to 16 came unto me, and stood, and said unto me, Brother Saul, receive thy sight. And the same hour I looked up upon him. And he said, The God of our fathers hath chosen thee, that thou shouldest know his will, and see that just one, and shouldest hear the voice of his mouth. For thou shalt be his witness unto all men of what thou hast seen and heard. And now why tarriest thou? 
arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins. God did not tell Ananias anything about baptizing Paul in Acts 9. Ananias took it upon himself to baptize Paul because the commission given to the twelve apostles to Israel required its recipients to be baptized to receive the remission of sins. Paul was the one to whom the Lord would reveal the mystery program to, not Ananias. Water baptism was required for a kingdom saint as it was part of their washing as a nation to become a priest in Israel's future kingdom. Exodus 19 verses 5 to 6 Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine, and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests, and an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Exodus 29 verses 1 to 7 And this is the thing that thou shalt do unto them to hallow them, to minister unto me in the priest's office. Take one young bullock, and two rams without blemish, and unleavened bread, and cakes unleavened tempered with oil, and wafers unleavened anointed with oil, of wheat and flour shalt thou make them. And thou shalt put them into one basket, and bring them in the basket, with the bullock and the two rams. And Aaron and his sons thou shalt bring unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and shalt wash them with water. And thou shalt take the garments, and put upon Aaron the coat, and the robe of the ephod, and the ephod, and the breastplate, and gird him with the curious girdle of the ephod, and thou shalt put the mitre upon his head, and put the holy crown upon the mitre. Then shalt thou take the anointing oil, and pour it upon his head, and anoint him. 1 Peter 2 verse 9 But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, an holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should shew forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Acts 22 verses 17 to 22 And it came to pass, that, when I was come again to Jerusalem, even while I prayed in the temple, I was in a trance, and saw him saying unto me, Make haste, and get thee quickly out of Jerusalem, for they will not receive thy testimony concerning me. And I said, Lord, they know that I imprisoned and beat in every synagogue them that believed on thee, and when the blood of thy martyr Stephen was shed, I also was standing by, and consenting unto his death, and kept the raiment of them that slew him. And he said unto me, Depart, for I will send thee far hence unto the Gentiles. And they gave him audience unto this word, and then lifted up their voices, and said, Away with such a fellow from the earth, for it is not fit that he should live. Make haste and get thee quickly out of Jerusalem. Paul thought they would listen to him because he was the previous leader against the saints, and he could prove it, but God knew their hearts. Satan would not allow his greatest traitor to witness before these Jews, so he stirred their hearts against him, but what Satan did not know is that God was allowing Satan to send Paul away so that he could reach out to the Gentiles. If Paul would have stayed and ministered amongst the Jews, there would be even more confusion as to his role with the Gentiles and that of the twelve with the Jews. God knew what he was doing. Depart, for I will send thee far hence to the Gentiles. This testimony of Paul's salvation experience was not a second sending of Paul, it was just another account by Paul of the events of his salvation. Acts 9 and 26 Paul was only sent out by Christ once. He just had more information as he received further revelation at numerous times. Paul has already been going to Gentiles from Acts 13 onward. Sergius Paulus was a Gentile, and many others that Paul preached to were as well. When Israel lost its most favored nation status, they would then be accounted or numbered as part of the nations and Gentiles. Today God does not see people as Jews or Gentiles, just as saved or lost. Israel today has no special status in the dispensation of grace. They will however in the tribulation period and in the kingdom. Notice that they gave Paul audience until he said one word, Gentiles, dogs. This was unthinkable yet for the Jew as long as they were under Rome's thumb because the prophets all foretold that the Jews would go preach to the Gentiles in the kingdom. 
There were no prophecies about the Gentiles hearing the truth before Israel rose to her glory, because that is a part of the unsearchable riches of Christ that Paul mentions that have been kept a secret since the world began. Ephesians 3 verse 8 unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. The Gentiles, the idea that God would send a Jew to the Gentiles to preach the gospel to them was reprehensible until the kingdom came when the Jews were to rule over the Gentiles. The Gentiles, however, currently ruled over them. The dispensation of grace was ushered in because of Israel's unbelief, and it will end at the rapture. After the time of Jacob's, Israel's, trouble the kingdom will be established, and Israel will go out to the Gentiles. But now they are both preached to on a level playing field. Acts 22 verses 23 to 28 And as they cried out, and cast off their clothes, and threw dust into the air, the chief captain commanded him to be brought into the castle and bade that he should be examined by scourging, that he might know wherefore they cried so against him. And as they bound him with thongs, Paul said unto the centurion that stood by, Is it lawful for you to scourge a man that is a Roman, and uncondemned? When the centurion heard that, he went and told the chief captain, saying, Take heed what thou doest, for this man is a Roman. Then the chief captain came and said unto him, Tell me, art thou a Roman? He said, Yeah. And the chief captain answered, With a great sum obtained I this freedom. And Paul said, But I was free born, a Roman, a citizen of Rome with all its rights and privileges. I was free born, Saul of Tarsus was born a Roman citizen, which would later give him free access to travel the known world, and he would enjoy many freedoms that non-Roman citizens did not have. Acts 22 verses 29 to 30 Then straightway they departed from him which should have examined him, and the chief captain also was afraid, after he knew that he was a Roman, and because he had bound him. On the morrow, because he would have known the certainty wherefore, he was accused of the Jews, he loosed him from his bands, and commanded the chief priests and all their council to appear, and brought Paul down, and set him before them. Chapter 23 Paul Before the Council Acts 23 verses 1 to 5 And Paul, earnestly beholding the council, said, Men and brethren, I have lived in all good conscience before God until this day. And the high priest Ananias commanded them that stood by him to smite him on the mouth. Then said Paul unto him, God shall smite thee, thou whited wall, for sittest thou to judge me after the law, and commandest me to be smitten contrary to the law? And they that stood by said, Revilest thou God's high priest? Then said Paul, I wist not, brethren, that he was the high priest, for it is written, Thou shalt not speak evil of the ruler of thy people. Thou whited wall, Paul uses a quote of Jesus that was very well known by the high priest because it was said to his scribes and the Pharisees in the past. They looked like the beautiful white walled sepulchers that encased the bones of dead men. Matthew 23 verse 27 Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye are like unto whited sepulchers, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. Acts 23 verses 6 to 9 But when Paul perceived that the one part were Sadducees and the other Pharisees, he cried out in the council, Men and brethren, I am a Pharisee, the son of a Pharisee, of the hope and resurrection of the dead I am called in question. And when he had so said, there arose a dissension between the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and the multitude was divided. For the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection, neither angel, nor spirit, but the Pharisees confess both. And there arose a great cry, and the scribes that were of the Pharisees part arose, and strove, saying, We find no evil in this man, but if a spirit or an angel hath spoken to him, let us not fight against God. I have lived in all good conscience before God until this day. This would be an affront to the high priest and to the Jews' religion unless Jesus really was the Christ. Notice how those who were blinded by religion would easily violate the word of God when it threatened their system. The Sadducees were the modern-day liberals. They did not believe in the hope of Israel which was their resurrection into their kingdom. 
The Pharisees did, but they did not believe that Jesus was the Christ because that would mean they were wrong and that they had participated in killing their Messiah. Paul used a tactic to catch the devil's crowd off guard and to get them fighting amongst themselves. He pitted the two groups against one another. God could have delivered Paul, but he also gave him a great mind which he expected him to use from time to time. Acts 23 verses 10 to 15 And when there arose a great dissension, the chief captain, fearing lest Paul should have been pulled in pieces of them, commanded the soldiers to go down and to take him by force from among them and to bring him into the castle. And the night following the Lord stood by him and said, Be of good cheer, Paul, for as thou hast testified of me in Jerusalem, so must thou bear witness also at Rome. And when it was day, certain of the Jews banded together and bound themselves under a curse, saying that they would neither eat nor drink till they had killed Paul. And they were more than forty which had made this conspiracy. And they came to the chief priests and elders and said, We have bound ourselves under a great curse, that we will eat nothing until we have slain Paul. Now therefore ye with the counsel signify to the chief captain that he bring him down unto you tomorrow, as though ye would inquire something more perfectly concerning him, and we, or ever he come near, are ready to kill him. The high priest himself was included in this plot to kill Paul. Religion will blind someone to the point of killing someone else who threatens their control. So must thou bear witness also at Rome, Paul was going to make it to Rome, one way or another, and this announcement from God did not tell Paul how that would come about, just that it would happen. This announcement would no doubt give Paul the encouragement he needed to keep pressing on, even when his countrymen were plotting to kill him. Acts 23 verses 16 to 21 And when Paul's sister's son heard of their lying in wait, he went and entered into the castle and told Paul. Then Paul called one of the centurions unto him and said, Bring this young man unto the chief captain, for he hath a certain thing to tell him. So he took him and brought him to the chief captain and said, Paul the prisoner called me unto him and prayed me to bring this young man unto thee, who hath something to say unto thee. Then the chief captain took him by the hand and went with him aside privately and asked him, What is that thou hast to tell me? And he said, The Jews have agreed to desire thee that thou wouldest bring down Paul tomorrow into the council, as though they would inquire somewhat of him more perfectly. But do not thou yield unto them, for there lie in wait for him of them more than forty men, which have bound themselves with an oath, that they will neither eat nor drink till they have killed him, and now are they ready, looking for a promise from thee. Paul's sister's son, God could have just caused a tower to fall on Paul's enemies or sent a legion of angels to kill them in their sleep, but instead he used a little boy, Paul's nephew, to alert the chief captain of the plot to kill him. Acts 23 verses 22 to 35 So the chief captain then let the young man depart and charged him, See thou tell no man that thou hast shewed these things to me. And he called unto him two centurions, saying, Make ready two hundred soldiers to go to Caesarea, and horsemen threescore and ten, and spearmen two hundred, at the third hour of the night, and provide them beasts, that they may set Paul on, and bring him safe unto Felix the governor. And he wrote a letter after this manner, Claudius Lysias unto the most excellent governor Felix sendeth greeting. This man was taken of the Jews, and should have been killed of them, then came I with an army, and rescued him, having understood that he was a Roman. And when I would have known the cause wherefore they accused him, I brought him forth into their council, whom I perceived to be accused of questions of their law, but to have nothing laid to his charge worthy of death or of bonds. And when it was told me how that the Jews laid wait for the man, I sent straightway to thee, and gave commandment to his accusers also to say before thee what they had against him. Farewell. Then the soldiers, as it was commanded them, took Paul and brought him by night to Antipatris. On the morrow they left the horsemen to go with him and returned to the castle, who, when they came to Caesarea and delivered the epistle to the governor, presented Paul also before him. And when the governor had read the letter, he asked of what province he was. And when he understood that he was of Cilicia, I will hear thee, said he, when thine accusers are also come. And he commanded him to be kept in Herod's judgment hall. 
And to Patris, this was a city in Israel built by Herod the Great in honor of his father Antipater. The battle of Aphek was fought there in the Old Testament. 1 Samuel 4 verses 1 to 10. It was out of the way, but a great place to hide someone temporarily while people are trying to kill them. Paul's Roman citizenship was what would get him an audience with Governor Felix and with Herod. Without it, he would not have had the opportunity to speak the word of God to those in attendance. Cilicia, this was a province in southern Turkey. It is mentioned seven times in the book of Acts and in Galatians 1 verse 21. The governor wanted to know what province Paul was from so he could determine what jurisdiction was over him. Chapter 24 The Resurrection Acts 24 verses 1 to 9 And after five days Ananias the high priest descended with the elders and with a certain orator named Tertullus who informed the governor against Paul. And when he was called forth, Tertullus began to accuse him, saying, Seeing that by thee we enjoy great quietness, and that very worthy deeds are done unto this nation by thy providence, we accept it always, and in all places, most noble Felix, with all thankfulness. Notwithstanding, that I be not further tedious unto thee, I pray thee that thou wouldest hear us of thy clemency a few words. For we have found this man a pestilent fellow, and a mover of sedition among all the Jews throughout the world, and a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes, who also hath gone about to profane the temple, whom we took and would have judged according to our law. But the chief captain Lysias came upon us, and with great violence took him away out of our hands, commanding his accusers to come unto thee, by examining of whom thyself mayest take knowledge of all these things, whereof we accuse him. And the Jews also assented, saying that these things were so. A certain orator named Tertullus noticed the high priest hired an orator to speak their case against Paul, who also used flowering words to try to convince Felix that they only wanted what Felix wanted, great quietness. Paul, on the other hand, did not need any counsel to represent him because the Holy Spirit of God would give him what he needed to say in his defense. The sect of the Nazarenes, Acts 28 verse 22 But we desire to hear of thee what thou thinkest, for as concerning the sect, we know that every word is spoken against. Acts 24 verses 10 to 13 Then Paul, after that the governor had beckoned unto him to speak, answered, Forasmuch as I know that thou hast been of many years a judge unto this nation, I do the more cheerfully answer for myself, because that thou mayest understand that there are yet but twelve days since I went up to Jerusalem for to worship. And they neither found me in the temple disputing with any man, neither raising up the people, neither in the synagogues, nor in the city, neither can they prove the things whereof they now accuse me. They had no right to have Paul arrested on trumped-up charges since they were all based upon their hatred of him. Paul once was one of them, but he had been saved and now was the leader of what God was doing in this present dispensation of grace and that made him their enemy. Acts 24 verses 14 to 15 But this I confess unto thee, that after the way which they call heresy, so worship I the God of my fathers, believing all things which are written in the law and in the prophets, and have hope toward God, which they themselves also allow, that there shall be a resurrection of the dead, both of the just and unjust. The way which they call heresy, Paul believed the scriptures that Christ would be resurrected from the dead, but the religious leaders did not believe that Jesus was the Christ, nor that he had risen from the dead. Psalm 2 Acts 24 verses 16 to 21 And herein do I exercise myself, to have always a conscience void of offense toward God and toward men. Now after many years I came to bring alms to my nation and offerings. Whereupon certain Jews from Asia found me purified in the temple, neither with multitude, nor with tumult. Who ought to have been here before thee, and object, if they had aught against me? Or else let these same here say, if they have found any evil doing in me, while I stood before the council, except it be for this one voice, that I cried standing among them, touching the resurrection of the dead I am called in question by you this day. The resurrection of the dead, notice Jesus' words to Martha concerning her brother Lazarus who had died. John 11 verses 25 to 27 Jesus saith unto her, I am the resurrection, and the life, he that believeth in me. Thou he were dead, yet shall he live. 
and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? She saith unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. I came to bring alms to my nation, and offerings, these were the offerings given by the Gentile churches for suffering Jews. Purified in the temple, he went through the days of purification required before entering the temple. Acts 24 verses 22 to 27 And when Felix heard these things, having more perfect knowledge of that way, he deferred them and said, When Lysias the chief captain shall come down, I will know the uttermost of your matter. And he commanded a centurion to keep Paul and to let him have liberty and that he should forbid none of his acquaintance to minister or come unto him. And after certain days, when Felix came with his wife Drusilla, which was a Jewess, he sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith in Christ. And as he reasoned of righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come, Felix trembled and answered, Go thy way for this time, when I have a convenient season, I will call for thee. He hoped also that money should have been given him of Paul, that he might lose him, wherefore he sent for him the oftener and communed with him. But after two years Porcius Festus came into Felix's room, and Felix, willing to shew the Jews a pleasure, left Paul bound. Paul said that he worshipped God by believing all things written in the law and in the prophets and that they call that way heresy. Paul said he agreed with the scriptures concerning the resurrection of the just and of the unjust, and Israel's leaders did not. What an accusation against Israel's leaders. He reasoned of righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come. Felix was convicted by the words which Paul spoke, but he still left Paul bound because he had counted the cost of serving Jesus Christ, and he preferred the pleasures of sin for a season.